What's up, folks? It's your boy James R. Davis Sr. coming to you live once again with another Real Crypto Talk. So, let's get into the markets. All right, Bitcoin. Over the past hours, down 0.5%. Ethereum down 0.5%. Polka Dot has taken over the number three spot. Number fourth spot. Taking over XRP's spot. Man, absolutely incredible. Up 72% over the past seven days. Definitely got me a bag of that dot. Ripple down 0.1%. Dot is down 0.3% over the past hour. Cardano down 0.1%. Let's look at the past 24 hours. Curve dial token, the graph near empty set dollar <clears throat> engine coin, all up. <coughs> <coughs> of course, I'm smoking trees. <laughs> Live here on Real Crypto Talk. Make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, turn on the post notification so you can get Real Crypto Talk from your boy James R. Davis Sr. Uh, overcoming the, a little slight cold. Feeling pretty good though. Let's look at the biggest losers. Voyager token. This is a good buying signal right now because it's up 101% over the past seven days. Yes, indeed. I would highly recommend you download the wallet. The link will be below. You're going to get a bonus. Download this. Start buying your crypto from there as well. It's a good app. I've had it for over a year. Pretty phenomenal. I like the setup of it. I like the way they track everything for you right there on your screen. Shows you when you enter it, how much you're up, how much you're down, all that good stuff. Staking involved. Pretty cool wallet. It's down 14% over the past 24 hours. Might want to scoop up you a bag of that. <laughs> IOST is down 9.7% Celsius. Another one. Another wallet. Another coin you might want to look at. Long term, down 9.4%. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment purposes. Don't take my advice. Do your research, of course. Zcash down 9%. Uma down 7.7%. Cosmos down 6.2%. That is a pretty good steal as well, right about now. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the news. Guggenheim, CIO, speculative frenzy to die down, but 400k target still on. These guys have a huge fund, and they are big in the game. You may want to take a look at what they've been saying recently about cryptocurrencies and so forth. So, uh, yeah, might want to take a look at that. Secure Bitcoin, self-custody, balancing safety, and ease of use is in the news. You're starting to decriminalize access. Arca Jeff Dorman on crypto's impact on organizational structure and other big trends to look for in 2021. Decred co-founder explains possible effects of a CBDC takeover. Hmm, interesting. America and sound money, the most important Bitcoin essay of the last year. Why DeFi? Plus, asset tokenization will take crypto to new heights. I agree. Synthetic dreams. Wrap crypto assets gain traction mid surging market. DeFi bull run. Why Ave and Sushi are surging despite Bitcoin price uncertainty. Keeping my eyes on those two as well. 500 million in crypto futures liquidated as Bitcoin dips below 34K. What happens next is in the headlines. Man, this is a dope ass. I gotta save this, man. 
<laughs> I'm saying that joke right now. That's too dope. Institutional investors won't take Bitcoin mainstream. You will. Interesting. Algorithmic asset experiments continue to entice traders and developers. Let's get into the news of the day. This is big. Complete internet shutdown wipes out Uganda. In the U.S., social media can shut down the president. In Uganda, the president can shut down the entire internet. This is news I missed, actually. In brief, the Ugandan government essentially shut down the internet before the country's presidential elections on Thursday. Critics say the move was to stifle the flow of information. It's also stifling the flow of Bitcoin. In the run-up to Thursday's election, Ugandan President Yoir, whatever his last name is, Museveni, can't pronounce that. I apologize for that. I normally don't use that word can't, but uh, Yo Yowier Museveni, Museveni, who has been in power since a 1986 coup. Wow. Who does that remind you of? Uh, it was seemingly pulling out all the stops to win a sixth term. Police had arrested and harassed his main opponent, pop star turned politician Bobby Wine, and he had used COVID protocols as a pretext to shut down opposition events. And then government agencies turned off all access to social media apps such as Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. That's pretty insane. That's pretty insane if you ask me, don't you think? That's pretty insane, guys. But that's the world we live in these days, man. But as Ugandans got around the social media restrictions by way of a private, a virtual private network, which is a VPN, I currently use that to trade on certain exchanges that do not allow United States. You know, it just sucks, guys. It really just sucks. Anyway. On January 13th, the Ugandan Communications Commission pulled the plug on the entire internet indefinitely, mandating that internet service providers suspend the operation of international gateways. Kyle Spencer, the government of Uganda, has ordered internet service providers to shut down all internet gateways until further notice. We are completely cut off from the world. That's crazy. Expect Kyle Spencer, the head of the Ugandan Internet Exchange Point, a nonprofit aimed at improving the country's internet connectivity, wrote that the Uganda was cut off from the world. Domestic internet traffic dropped by 95% in one day. Damn. Only a few networks still have a pulse. Most have flatlined. Some one anonymous source on January 12th, when only social media sites had been targeted in Uganda, in, in Uganda, the shutdown is simply to avoid the flow of information from the public at the time when we need full transparency and open reporting. As a side effect, according to the analytics, and, 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 uh, according to analytics site Useful Tulips. There's been no reported Bitcoin trading activity on peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, local Bitcoins, or Paxful within Uganda since January 14th. A visit by Decrypt to Paxful, Uganda's shilling UGX site found sell offers from uh, Ghanaians, Nigerians, and Kenyans, but no Ugandians. UGX traders on local Bitcoins held from neighboring countries, Rwanda, Tanzania, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. To be sure, the Ugandan market is small. The P2P markets register somewhere between 5,000 and 15,000 in trading per day. It's so small, in fact, that Binance closed their local site, citing low trade volumes, pointing out the anonymous source that was in November 2020. The lack of activity is worrisome nonetheless. Bitcoin has some soft spots in countries with authoritarian leading governments and monopolies. Who does that sound like? 
MTN Uganda, a telecoms company beholding to the blackout, controls 60% of the country's mobile phone market. We would have a solution to that. We clear that link will be below. It plays a fundamental role in providing access to the internet via smartphones and the USB devices, and it runs mobile money, a mobile-based payment system that many use to send remittances, pay school fees, and yes, buy censorship-resistant Bitcoin. Ugandans, however, are used to be that creating workarounds. In 2018, the government began taxing visits to social media apps on mobile phones. The blocking of social media sites earlier this week was a logical next step. That meant opposition groups were ready for dirty tricks. Anderson Taylor, uh, Sigia, <laughs> and Bobby Wine supporter drew international attention by suing President Museveni for blocking him on Twitter, told Decrypt. We had encouraged many to install VPNs, does not want Ugandans opposing his misrule to communicate about this Thursday election irregularities and illegalities, but we are lucky to have the alternative of VPN today. Uh, that is so true. That's why the blockchain is powerful. The internet shutoff makes that mute, however. And while blockchains can still run, even if internet on-ramps go down, using everything from satellites to mesh networks, why do some governments choose to make their citizens work so hard to share information and money? That is a good question. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, VPNs, golden nugget there. And uh, uh, on the phone situation, we have a solution to that. A totally decentralized phone we have access to. Link will be below uh, under clear. So I, I wanted to take a look at a couple of charts real quick. Uh, Celsius, one being one. Uh, another one being Voyager, uh, the app that we talked about. You know, just looking at the growth of this coin. Uh, go from 20 uh, cents as of January 5th all the way up to $1.36. Cents. That's a lot of growth. And so uh, right now it's trending downward. So it's, it's, it's definitely a good time to either sit back and wait and see what, uh, what area of support is going to support this, this dip. Uh, or you may just want to start uh, buying in as it dies down and then reverses back up. So that's just a quick tip on that particular coin. That's Voyager. And another one, Celsius. I was looking at the trading activity here, uh, the volatility in, in this range, which is absolutely incredible because when you do uh, the percentages here from like this tip here up to this particular spot that's about a, uh, let me do this here from here to here that's about a 12 percent 11 percent you know from that bottom right there to that top but this this range here this, this whole range here is about six percent six and a half percent seven percent right so that's pretty that's pretty good 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 range of trading uh, where you can earn a lot of money if you know how to trade and uh, uh, actually iCoin Pro is definitely the company that can teach you how to trade if you're interested in that links will be below for that as well but anyway take a look do your research on Celsius as a wallet that link will be below Voyager as well as a wallet that link will be below as well both of them pay staking rewards, so you may want to consider that. Lastly, let's look at Bitcoin real quick for the last few seconds. Currently, we're looking at about 35791 and it's uptrending a little bit, so as we can see here. But let's keep our eyes on it. And... Uh, Safe trading and happy investing, folks. It's your boy James R. Davis C. signing out. Peace.